Welcome back to Gruber Motor Company. I'm Pete Gruber. I mean, if we had yesterday's grid with tomorrow's cars, it's not going to work. The North American power grid is, well, it's a mess. That means a tripling of the energy consumption by electric. The electrical grid is a topic of much conversation these days as the world is hurtling towards eliminating fossil fuel burning internal combustion engine vehicles. The ability to harness electricity and move electrons around is one of mankind's greatest technological achievements. But the grid is in trouble. Or is it? So what exactly is the grid? How does it work? And can it handle the future consumption of electricity that is projected to rapidly increase? Well, the electrical grid is a massive network of interconnected power generating stations, transmission lines, and infrastructure, which allows electricity to be generated, transported, consumed, and even sold to adjacent countries all over the planet. The concept of the electrical grid started back in 1882, with the first distributed grid system being built in Manhattan and New Jersey. By 1914, the grid had expanded to 43 states, and regulatory commissions had been set up in each state for what was then the birth of electric utilities. Since the early 20th century, this power generating grid has come quite a long way and is now supporting over 330 million people in the USA. The sources of power feeding this grid vary from hydroelectric sources, geothermal, coal-fired plants, gas-fired plants, wind generation, nuclear power plants, photovoltaic solar cells, and even harnessing the motion of waves. The burning question is whether all these electricity generating methods will be sufficient as mass adoption of electric vehicles continues, soon reaching exponential growth as we are in the second coming of the electric vehicle. The reason we say second coming is because electric vehicles are not new by any definition. In fact, what many people may not know is that EVs actually predate the grid itself. The first electric vehicles were created during the late 1820s and were preferred over steam and other alternative methods of travel until the turn of the century when internal combustion engines took over. After ICE vehicles stole the spotlight, it would be another 100 years before a realistic and viable option for EVs emerged when Tesla launched the original Tesla Roadster in 2008. Since the launch of the original Roadster, Tesla has continued to have a meteoric rise and is expanding at a rate not seen by an auto manufacturer in over a century. So back to the matter at hand. With Tesla reigniting the passion for electric vehicles and creating a truly viable electric future, can the grid handle the coming electric vehicle dominance? The short answer is, it depends. According to the Statista site, there were over 276 million registered vehicles in the United States as of 2020. If all the cars on the road today were immediately converted to electric vehicles, then unfortunately the grid would not be able to compensate and handle for that kind of increased demand. Fortunately, that isn't going to happen and we have about 15 to 20 years to continue building the grid before anything like a true EV takeover begins. So you may be wondering, just how much do we need to increase the grid's capacity over the next couple of decades or so to meet the coming demand? For the answer to this question, we turn to the experts at the Engineering Explained YouTube channel. Based on their calculations, in order to meet the demand for electricity as compared to the amount of energy used or consumed by internal combustion engine vehicles, we would need to increase the grid by about 30% from where it is right now. For a more fully detailed explanation with all the mathematics, facts, and figures, please make sure to check out the Engineering Explained YouTube channel. So 30% doesn't sound too bad, right? But what exactly would that kind of increase look like? And can it be done with the time that we have left? An example that may be able to give you some perspective comes from 40 years of data collected between 1960 and the year 2000. The following information can also be found in the same video from Engineering Explained. In 1960, the energy production nationwide was about 760 billion kilowatt hours, which sounds like a lot. But by the year 2000, U.S. energy production increased to over 3.8 trillion kilowatt hours. That means over the course of about 40 years, 
we were able to multiply energy production of the grid five times from what it was in the early days. And considering we only need to increase by 30% over the next 15 to 20 years, we think it's a pretty safe bet that the grid will not only scale easily to match the demand for EVs, but it will in fact be far ahead of any issues as the world finally converts to clean energy transportation. We hope you found this information interesting and informative. Make sure to check out the description for links to our sources and other videos that we mentioned. I'm Pete Gruber. Thanks for joining us.